In this segment, we introduced a very central area of game theory called mechanism design. It's often also called implementation theory and uh, sometimes also called uh, inverse game theory. And the intuition is that when we often think about game theory, we think about a given game that was somehow we inherited. Uh, it's a situation that we need to reason about, and, and so we do. But in mechanism design, we get to design the game so as to optimize for certain qualities. Um, think, for example, about voting. Uh, we get to design the voting rules. It can be plurality or plurality of elimination or border or pairwise elimination or any number of other uh, mechanisms. Or think about uh, selling a product. We can sell it uh, directly by posting a price or we can run an auction and uh, there are many different kinds of auctions we could run. These are all examples of mechanisms and we'll be speaking about how to model this formally and what mechanisms aim to achieve. So, um, when we design a mechanism, for example, a voting rule, we don't design it in a vacuum. There are some set of candidates, for example, uh, that we don't get to control. Candidates will be what they are. We certainly don't get to control who the voters are. They are who they are. And we don't get to look inside their head and decide what they should care about who they prefer to whom, that's a given, that's their type. Also part of their type is what their information. What do they know about various things in the setting? We don't have to control any of that. So all that part, all that background that we don't get to control is called the setting or the Bayesian game setting. And what will happen, and we'll, we'll go over it now, but what will happen is we'll be given a Bayesian game setting, which won't quite be a game, it will be a setting, and then we'll add to it the ingredients that will turn it into a game. And we'll try to design the game so as to optimize certain qualities. And so, um, so let's go over it. Uh, we have this tuple, and let's go over it in order. So N is simply the set of agents. And O is a set of outcomes. Um, so we have the social choice function that has certain outcomes. For example, we have a voting situation with uh, certain possible candidates. And that is that set O. Then we have those types. Those are the, exactly the objects we saw in Bayesian games. Again, we don't yet have a game here, but the notion of type is well defined. And so we have a type of all that private information to agents. So intuitively think about it as in a voting situation, what is my preference ordering among the candidates? What do I know about the preference ordering of other agents? What do I know about what they know about my preference ordering? And all of that, all that pr uh, private information is my type. We have as we usually do a common prior probability distribution over those types uh, that's commonly known by, by the agent. And we have a utility function that says uh, given an outcome and given the types of the agents, what is the uh, utility to each of the players? And so um, given that my preference ordering uh, is what it is, and given that a particular candidate was uh, elected, for example, would give me some utility. This is all the setting that we as mechanism designers don't, do, don't, do not get to control and don't have access to. <clears throat> we know perhaps who the agents are, we don't know their types. We, we may know their uh, the, the common prior on those types. So now, what is a mechanism? A mechanism consists of those things that when added to the Bayesian game setting will make for a Bayesian game. 
So there's two things that are missing are the actions. So, so far we had no action for the agents. So a mechanism simply specifies the action, for example, the voting rules or the auction rules. And it also specifies because the actions, if they just live in a vacuum, don't have any force, so they need to interact with the setting somehow. The actions simply specify the, um, the, uh, the, the outcome, or more generally a distribution of the outcome. So uh, action simply a set of actions for each of the agents. For example, in a um, voting situation, it might be to specify your entire ordering among the uh, candidates or to specify your top candidate, whatever the voting rules are. And a mapping says, based on those actions, for example, those votes, who is the winner. And as you see here, for technical reasons, we don't necessarily uh, find one winner or, or one social choice outcome, but a distribution over those outcomes. Often for your intuition, think of it as specifying a specific outcome. Uh, you, won't, uh, you usually won't lose any intuition if you think about it that way. And so this is a mechanism. Given a Bayesian game setting, you add these two ingredients, the actions and how they map to outcomes. And when you put those together, you get a Bayesian uh, game. So how do you specify the mechanism? Well, the intuition is that we want, to, we want the agent to behave a certain way. We would like to reach a certain social choice outcome that's best. For example, we might want to find a socially optimal uh, Pareto efficient outcome. We might want in an auction setting to, uh, to auction setting to maximize our revenue and do that while not having control over the Beijing uh, game setting. And so the trick is to set up the rules of the game, the mechanism, to cause agents to behave the way we want them, even though we don't have access to the internal information and can't directly control the actions. But we will set the rules of the game such that by their acting in their own perceived self-interest, they will lead to the outcome we desire. And so it's really an op, you can view it in a number of ways. Uh, you can think of it as a, uh, an optimization problem with only partial information about and control over the variables you're optimizing. You can think of it as a, um, uh, you can sh think of the, the setting as a set of Bayesian games and you're picking a, a selecting a particular Bayesian game uh, out of those set, uh, and really perhaps the most basic uh, view of it is uh, goes back to one of the terms, implementation theory, and we really want to implement a social choice function, which we, if we had access to the agent's uh, types, we could have done directly, but we don't. If we simply ask the agents, it may not, it may, it may be in their interest to deceive us. And so our goal is to implement it nonetheless. And so something magical about the setting, and um, it's a quite a ro robust area within game theory. So what does it mean to implement a social choice function? Uh, it, in fact, uh, has several possible meanings. One of them, uh, among the strongest, is implementation in dominant strategies. What does that mean? Well. Let's assume we start with a Bayesian game setting and we add to it a mechanism and we'll say that that mechanism implements a social choice function, C, in dominant strategy. If it's the case that take any utility function for the agent, any vector U of utility functions, uh, one for each of the agents, if the game has an equilibrium in dominant strategies such that in uh, any such equilibrium, because there could be multiple dominant strategy equilibrium, but any such equilibrium, we have that the outcome specified by the mechanism is indeed the social choice function, 
Well, in that case, we will say that the mechanism implemented the social choice function in dominant strategies. You could ask several questions about it. Why should it be in all equilibria? Maybe it's enough that in one, indeed, you could define it that way. Why only dominant strategies? And in fact, the answer is it doesn't have to be in dominant strategy. So the more a more general, more relaxed uh, definition of implementation is implementation uh, in a Bayes-Nash equilibrium. And it is um, almost the same. We say that given this Bayesian game setting, we'll say that the mechanism implements the social choice function in a Bayes-Nash equilibrium as opposed to a dominant strategy equilibrium. If there exists a Bayes-Nash equilibrium of the game that results from the mechanism in the setting, such that in for every type of agent and every action profile that can arise in this equilibrium, it's the case that the outcome defined by that action profile is the social choice function of the agents given their types. So it's a, perhaps a little bit of a mouthful here, but the intuition is very much the same as in the dominant strategy uh, implementation. In dominant strategies, uh, the situation is simple. We simply have dominant strategies and we require that in uh, all of those the action profile lead to a sort of choice function. Here we have probability distributions and so uh, there can be multiple actions that instantiate this, these, these, these action profile, these, these, these strategies. And what we want it to be the case that every action profile would lead up by definition to some uh, outcome according to the, this mapping. And we would like it to be the case that indeed it's a social choice of the agents as they are, meaning they have their own preferences. And with respect to those preferences, we want that action profile to lead to the optimal outcome as defined by the social choice function. So, as I said earlier, um, mechanism design is a very rich and deep uh, topic in game theory. Uh, there's a lot to say about it, both from the formal point of view, and it is also among the parts of game theory that have lent themselves most to um, applications, uh, most notably to auctions, and uh, there are separate uh, lectures about that. But let me, for now, stay at the kind of more abstract level and make a few comments about uh, Bayes-Nash implementation. First of all, there could be uh, multiple equilibria. And we back to the same issue that we have in game theory in general, even before we speak about mechanism design. When we have multiple equilibria of a game, what do we actually predict that will happen? Now, in a mechanism design setting, we could say, uh, if I have multiple equilibria, um, is it enough that I uh, select one of them and require that that equilibrium always lead to a social choice optimum or, or not? Um, we have the usual uh, concerns about equilibrium in general. Uh, equilibrium is a very strong notion. Uh, what happens if agents, first of all, somehow miscoordinate on the equilibria and play different, uh, that is, strategy profiles corresponding to different equilibria, or even more uh, extremely, don't play an equilibrium at all? Um, a legitimate question in game theory in general, uh, and, and in particular here. Also, equilibria are a very general category, and um, one one, one, one objection could be that asymmetric equilibria uh, are implausible here. There's no reason to think that when presenting a game, one, uh, one agent 
would gravitate to uh, one strategy and a, another agent to another, even though the setting is completely symmetric. And so there are various things you can do about these questions and concerns. One of them is simply uh, require that the implementation be asymmetric based Nash equilibrium that takes care of the uh, asymmetry uh, concerns. Uh, you might want also uh, to uh, require exposed implementation, meaning that the uh, uh, strategies uh, selected are an exposed equilibrium, a very strong notion. So agents don't exper experience regret for having selected those equilibria even after the game is played. Going beyond issues specific to Bayes-Nash implementation on implementation of social choice functions in general, uh, we can require um, indeed that it arise in some equilibrium or in every equilibrium. Uh, we can even require that there be only one equilibrium in which it requires. And finally, there's various ways to have to implement a function. And uh, one important distinction that uh, to keep in mind is between direct implementation and indirect implementation. Uh, in a direct implementation, agents send essentially a single message uh, to the mechanism designer, the center, disclosing whatever they need to disclose about their type and then the rest happens in, within the mechanism, whereas in indirect uh, mechanisms, uh, there's a, uh, an iterative process of messaging back and forth. Um, think even about voting as an example. Um, you could simply disclose once and for all uh, something, for example, your entire preference profile. I prefer A to C to B. Or if the mechanism calls for only disclosing your top choice, say, I simply prefer A to the others. And that's it. That would be a, a direct uh, mechanism. Whereas an iterative mechanism uh, would say, uh, for example, in a, in a voting situation, um, might say, um, uh, so, you know, let's speak about plurality of the elimination. You declare your top choice. And then again, you declare the top choice among the remaining candidates, uh, and um, and um, and you might uh, you, so there'll be an unfolding process. Um, direct implementations will turn out to be quite universal in what they can accomplish, and much easier to analyze than indirect uh, implementation. And so, for theoretical investigation purposes, at least they are quite central.